Hello, this is Brian, my name is Alechtina Matyarova, and today, as usual, we focus on people who, on the one hand, glorify Kazakhstan beyond its borders, and on the other, give you and me the reason to be proud. Meet the theater and film actor Aziz Bishan Aliyev. They say that acting is the art of giving away secrets. So today, we will try to find out some of them from our star. No matter how good he looks on camera, with what trepidation the audience whispers in the theater hall before the show, in the end, all we see is the way he embodies characters. Let's find out what Aziz Bishan Aliyev is like in real life. Biographical note. Aziz Bishan Aliyev. Born on March 15, 1971 in the city of Frunze, current Bishkek son of an outstanding Kyrgyz actor Bolot Bishan Aliyev. Studied in the Oriental Languages Department of the Tashkent State University, majored in Chinese philology. In 1996, he graduated from the school studio of the Tashkent Theatre and Art Institute named after Ostrovsky, part of the Tashkent State Academic Russian Drama Theatre named after Gorky. In 2020, he became a laureate of the Best Actor Award at the International Filmmaker Festival of New York for film Olma John. Aziz's filmography is quite extensive, starting from The Nomad and Paragraph 78, which made a lot of noise in their time, to the historical roles in the films Panfilov's 28 Men or Mustafa Shokai. Now, Aziz lives and works simultaneously in Almaty and Moscow, where he starred in TV series Ambulance. And this, mind you, apart from the roles in the theater. To begin with, I visited the set of the film Dost Mukhasan to see with my own eyes how the magic of cinema is done, and to catch our hero in action. Cinema is a wonderful thing on the one hand, but absolutely merciless on the other. Neither the weather, nor the location, nor the rain, nothing matters if it matches the director's idea. It is extremely cold outside. We are in the village of Karakemir. Behind my back there's some old cultural center, and this is where the movie Dos Mukhasan is being filmed. This picture has already been nicknamed the saga about Kazakh Beatles. The film tells the story of the iconic for its time group. The band became a real legend, and a film about the musicians was a matter of time. We are on the set of Dos Mukhasan, and Aziz plays here the president of the Polytechnic Institute. They're rehearsing now. In cinema it's always magical. Look, there he sits, with an interesting forelock, going over his lines. I play the president of the Polytechnic Institute in the late 60s and early 70s, Ashim Omarov. This is a real person, and thank God, as far as I know, he's still alive. This is the first time in my professional experience, and of course, I'm scared. Why are you scared? You play the president. Well, a person will come to the premiere, watch and say, who did you take? Is this supposed to be me? Take him away. This will be uncomfortable. Yes, sometimes a lot of responsibility falls on the shoulders of actors. Their instincts, their own erudition and, of course, the work of consultants and a director will help ensure authenticity in historical films. Many authors, directors, screenwriters thought of making this film, but I was the lucky one. Cast and crew had a very difficult task at finding a portrait likeness. We searched for a very long time and as a result found Aziz, who thank God was in Kazakhstan at that moment. We found ourselves in between his other projects and we are lucky to be working with such a performer. He's a very experienced, very flexible actor who can convey your thoughts and ideas of the author through his skill. It is incredibly easy to work with him on the set. He's very easy to talk to, talented and skilled. We learn from his craftsmanship. Aziz proposes a lot of things. Let's try this, let's do that. New mise en scenes, new details emerge in the process of work. It's great to work with him. So the president passes by and immediately asks. Okay, this is the secretary of Komsomol Regional Committee. She agreed to accompany you to the city party commit. And then right away, why do we need to go there? We have our alumnus there. We will propose your candidacy for a competition of a higher level. 
фокуса более высокого уровня. Working schedule, normal working hours, weekends – all this is not about actors. Here on set, work is always in full swing. What time did you get up today? I got up at five. And when did you go to bed? I went to bed at three. Did you style the hair? No. For this we have makeup artists who will do it professionally, unlike me. Well, you look very convincing. We have costume designers for this, specially trained people. They know how to make it look convincing. I didn't get to live in the 60s, but I think it looks very good. Actually, all this looks very beautiful on set. Entourage, props, just how the guys are dressed. Such an atmosphere. Are you enjoying this? You know, around three weeks ago, we were filming the first student concert in the cultural center. I looked at the guys, Kazakh-style hipsters. It was very beautiful. In my opinion, their whole essence is in this phrase, Kazakh-style hipsters. Well, we hope that we will keep up the good work till the end, and it will show on the screen. In fact, this is a biopic, not a very strong genre in Kazakh cinema, to shoot a film about real, living people. You know, this imposes a certain degree of responsibility on everyone. From the screenwriter to the editor, and us, the actors, because we make it all up with our faces. Well, we'll see. During his career, Aziz managed to work with real luminaries of world cinema. So, in the adventure film Wealth, he starred with Alek Tabakov and Sergei Nikonenko. In Nomad, with Kuno Becker and Jay Hernandez. In Paragraph 78, with Gosha Kutsenko and Vladimir Vdovichenkov. And in Lecter, with Dmitry Pivtsov and Fyodor Vondarchuk. About the range of roles, what role didn't you have? I didn't play Hamlet, and I didn't play Othello. Okay, you didn't play Hamlet, but you played very different characters. Can you name diametrically opposite roles, which you could not imagine at the beginning of your career? Well, I could not imagine at the beginning of my career that I would play a Moscow cop named Ivan. That was a surprise. I didn't think about the rest. Aziz's father, Bolot Bishanaliev, can be considered a legend of Soviet cinema. The audience may remember him in the films, Tass is also right to declare, Cossack Outpost, Trans-Siberian Express, and others. However, to say that Aziz grew up on set, like other representatives of acting dynasties, or that his father showed him the way, no, this is not about our hero. How can I be with my father? I practically did not know him. I was three years old when I was sent to my grandmother in Charju, Turkmenistan. I remember when I was three, four years old, my grandmother and I constantly flew to visit my father, my mother, my older sister in Frunze. It was one of the most terrible memories of my childhood, because the Yag-40 plane is the terror that flaps in the night. I vomited violently, like Horatio Nelson. Sometimes they came to visit us, then we would go to the park, ride a carousel and have a barbecue. But these were occasional, just like the memories about them. And when my parents divorced, I was five years old. To be honest, I didn't even notice the divorce, because I lived with my grandmother. I called my grandmother my mother until I was five, and then they explained to me that she wasn't exactly my mother. Aziz's mother is also a figure of the world of cinema. She worked for many years as an actress at the Kyrgyz State Drama Theatre, at the film studio Uzbek Film, and at the Kyrgyz Telefilm Studio. No, there was no paternal influence at all. Because I met him properly only when I was already 19 or 20, and before that I saw him only four times. These were short visits. For example, when we went to Moscow with my mother for the holidays, she called him saying, the children are here, you can come see them. Or when I was in the hospital in Moscow, he came to visit me. So no, there was no paternal influence. Initially, Aziz didn't even think about going into acting after school. His major was supposed to be Chinese philology. At that time, I was a student of Oriental Studies department. I didn't even think about movies. 
I remember during a big break I was going down the stairs and there as usual was a crowd of students and our dean was standing in front of the stairs, an unfamiliar lady with him. He sees me going down the stairs, points his finger at me and says, there he is, I think, what is it? And the lady asks, do you want to act in films? I'm like, what? It's just, I had long hair back then. It turned out that they went to all Tashkent universities looking for interesting faces. And apparently they came to our dean, asked if they had interesting faces. And my hair was this long then, so he probably remembered me. They were taking headshots for the project Tamerlane, which was then managed by Ali Khamaev. They took my picture, entered my data into some kind of database, and that's it. And then a lot changed in my life. Maybe three years had passed, and by that time I had already enrolled into a theatre studio. By the way, there was a funny continuation of this situation. And of course, no student life passes without adventures. At least creative people could not do without them. That was in the first year, and in the third year I started undergoing reserve officer training with this hair. Were you not required to cut them off? Well, they started demanding this from me, but I was like, why should I cut my hair? Here's the student charter, it says I must have a neat hairstyle, so I put my hair up in a ponytail like this, I have a neat hairstyle. The charter does not say anything about cutting hair. Oh, you think you're so smart? Well, yes, I'm a student of the Tashkent State University. I have a rather high intellect since I was able to get in. I was mocking them, you know. Our supervisor called me into his office for a conversation and said, I know you're a good guy. Let's not make our colonel angry. The guys told me that you're star in movies. Tell him that you star in movies. I'm like, who said? What movies? I don't understand what you're talking about. He said, let's say that you act in films and you need it for the role, for the state cinema. That's all. However, Vishnaliev decided to refuse such an ingenious but dishonest move. Was it the youthful exuberance or the love for the truth, which preserved to this day? But no fictional filming took place. This was humiliating. I just wanted to have long hair and not bother anyone. He said, well, the decision is yours. I wanted to help. The next class I was kicked out of the classroom. I quite calmly left the reserve officer training. They did not understand this. About half a year later, Aziz dropped out altogether. This was followed by the introduction to the world of theater. It turned out to be quite romantic. It was Cherchez la Femme. Then I had a very nervous relationship with my girlfriend. She went to an amateur youth drama school. They gathered there a couple of times a week in the evenings. The guys were younger than me, two or three years, but at this age it made a big difference. I went there and felt like I was too old for them and they were such children. And I went to this studio just to spend more time with my girlfriend. And then I somehow realized that I got interested. I liked it. Sketches, observations, non-object exercises, all of that. Walking with imaginary buckets. Yes, digging without a shovel, painting a chair without a chair. It turned out to be so interesting. For some time I did not leave at home, I lived with friends, did not study anywhere, I had to survive somehow. At that time, Aziz was imbued with the theatrical spirit. Friends at the youth theater, spending time in actor circles. The young mind was in a spin, but at the same time the realization came that if he wants to be on stage, it should be more serious. He wanted to become a dramatic actor. It so happened that it was at this time that the admission of students to the Gorky Russian Academic Theatre began. I just applied for directing because I knew that the students of the directing department will study all of the acting disciplines. Plus, I would study directing, and probably that's why they didn't torment me much at the audition. But in terms of directing, yes, I had to bend over backwards. 
I had to prepare an explication of a play. I chose my beloved Serrano. I did not know and still don't know what the explication of a play is. I just imagined how the performance could go, described it. I even wrote the Dreamcast, who I imagined would play which part. Who was in your Dreamcast? You know, it was a real dream cast, from Tashkent theatre actors to Moscow film actors, whom I imagined to be perfect for Serrano. Somehow I managed to do it so easily that I was even sad. How about overcoming obstacles? How about pulling out all the stops, but still getting my way? But the biggest shock was that Verzbitsky was on the selection committee. He was the leading actor of our Tashkent theatre. The entire repertoire depended on him. He then lived in Tashkent. He's a native of Tashkent. It was later that he moved to Moscow. Later, Viktor Vershbitsky would call Aziz the best among his classmates. However, studies and acquaintance with the great masters of the Tashkent theatre did not bring Aziz big roles. A vivid memory of that time was the participation in the performances of Lilia Sevastyanova's Lik Choreographic Theater. Now the actor calls it moments of acute happiness. But then of course I left for Moscow, because studying in Tashkent, such a province, where are the real acting schools? I will go to Moscow, I will be successful, I will work every day. And then I come to Moscow, Pyotr Fomenko was recruiting that year. I had $100 in my pocket, I went to audition to Fomenko. It was also a very long story. I was afraid to go straight to the Russian Institute of Theatre Arts. I went to Mikhail Shepkin Higher Theatre School, but it's Shukin Theatre Institute, Korki Moscow Art Theatre. I failed everywhere. Around this time, in an unexpected way, Aziz's career hit a breaking point. The headshots taken several years ago helped. This project was resumed, they found me again, they came to the theatre to get me, and then there were full-scale screen tests. With Ali Hamraev? Yes, he started this project and I passed these screen tests. And the screen tests were so serious that they took us to an equestrian school for two months. We were taught to write for screen tests. I was tried for the role of Emir Hussein, but then the project froze again, and after another year and a half it resumed again, but this time with another director, Bako Sadikov. I was cast for this film, but for a different role, for the role of the Mongolian Khan, Ilyas Khadri. It was the summer of 1996 already, and thus I got into the movies. What have you learned thanks to the acting? How many skills do you have that otherwise you would not have, perhaps? Let's just say everything and nothing, because all this is very much superficial, only so that it would be more or less good on camera, not too clumsy. Usually it is enough. For example, with Japanese language, when a few years ago in February I was cast for the role of a Japanese colonel, and there were a lot of Japanese lines, I asked the guys, will you give me the text? Yes, of course, shooting starts in June, we need to finish with casting, just wait and you will have a consultant, just wait for a month. A month passes, I call in March, yes, 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 one more month. I call in April, literally, in a couple of weeks, almost everything is ready. I called closer to May and they told me, you know what, there will be no Japanese lines, you will speak Russian on camera and we will voice over it in post-production. I was like, I won't believe myself, how is the audience supposed to believe me? No, sorry. I had a month to learn them and a week before they started filming, suddenly my agent, whom I love very much, called me and just cursed, saying, Aziz, they went with another actor. How? Well, they doubted all this time, you're a good actor, but too tall for a Japanese. You know the stereotype that Japanese must be small. This was a very strong blow for me. With my heart bleeding, I put that idea aside.
Imagine the actor's surprise when a couple of days before the filming began, he was asked to return. Yes, I returned to this project and I had my own lines prepared for me by my close friend Ole. And I was ready, despite the fact that I was kicked out previously. There were situations in Aziz's life where he had to play a role off stage and not in front of cameras. For example, when his Moscow life was just beginning, he worked as a delivery guy. And his financial situation was unsatisfactory at best. His acting talent helped him out more than once. It was a Chekhov festival. Me and my ex-wife, who also worked in delivery, we were walking in Moscow. We walked along the Boulevard Ring, past the Pushkin Theatre, where huge posters of Japanese Kyogen Theatre, an ancient genre of Japanese theatre, were hanging. And she says, did we come here for this? And I understand that I have to do something now. And so we enter from the employee's only entrance, and there an old lady working as a security guard in some grey-blue robe blocks our way. Where are you going? Buy tickets at the main entrance. And I smile at her and say, Hello, I'm an employee of the Japanese Embassy and the new translator of the Kyogen Theatre Administration. This is my wife and assistant, Miss Midori Hose. And she was like, yes, yes, go through here, there is a door, there is a courtyard, there is another door. That's where all of the rest are. I was like, thank you very much. Incidentally, Aziz developed a special relationship with the roles of Japanese historical figures. Paradoxical as it may sound, but our actors are still in great demand abroad when it comes to film adaptations of historical events with participation of, shall we say, Asians. Trite, but true. Your father played a Japanese. You played and are playing a Japanese again. And I have insider information that your son is already playing a Japanese. Well, he is just a student. And of course, like any normal student in search of a part-time job, and I proposed him as an extra to the director of the very project where I am a Japanese general, because there are a lot of Japanese soldiers and Chinese prisoners. In Moscow, it is difficult to find a lot of people suited for that, and they told me that he would be perfect as an extra, and then they asked if he can say one line in Chinese. I asked which one, they sent me the line, I sent it to him, and he said he can. They said great, they hired him and paid him 10 times more than for being an extra. In general, what's the most important is what he is interested in, and it makes me happy. Let him do his own thing. And the rest, this is only for part-time work. I have to go. They call for me. Good luck! This is how everything happens in the cinema. It does not matter what the weather is like outside, what time is on the clock, whether it is day or night, everyone is working. And everyone looks and behaves as if they were waiting for this their entire lives. Actors are good at it. Well, at least Aziz Bishanadiev. The audience remembers the image of the Japanese intelligence colonel Matsuoka, whose role Aziz Bishanari played in the film Red Mountains in 2013. It turned out very nicely. I would like to talk. Have a seat. Now, during this friendly conversation, it is difficult to imagine how he manages to transform into heroes with such a harsh disposition. But how can I help you? For example, you could tell me why he handed me over to the KGB 20 years ago. It seems that in Bishanali's life, nothing happens easily and immediately. His theatrical career, as well as cinematic, did not pick up after the first try. But it happened here, on the small stage of the Artishok Theatre in the play Uyat. I don't know much about theatre. I don't know anything about the documentary theatre. I always say, I work there as a suitcase. What Nastya tells me to do, I do. Walk through here, stand here, I walk there and I stand there. Say this. I say that, and that's all. The actor admits that his relationship with the theater is not as close as with the film, but even a brief performance on stage causes a lot of positive emotions. Theater in my life is the second, accidental, collateral love. 
If cinema is my wife, then theater is my mistress. The first time I performed in theatre four years ago, when Gala invited me to play in Uyat, which was a complete and absolute surprise for me. Gala called me, we met at a pizzeria on Gogol Street, and after five minutes I had the feeling that we were friends with her for 30 years. She won me over completely, and I realized that I would follow this person anywhere, into fire, into water, into a swamp. It doesn't matter at all, because she's a real director, who is a leader, and who knows how to ignite a passion in someone. Galina Pianova got a good first impression from meeting Aziz as well. I came to the meeting at a pizzeria and I saw an insanely beautiful person. He had a rare depth and beauty. Aziz is also a very tall man, which is rare in our region. Such a character, as they say. We talked, and from the conversation I realized that Aziz's main place of work was Moscow. He realized that I just came from Russia. We discussed some common pains. An important factor then for the director was the fact that the actor was not afraid to speak from the stage about acute social problems that the play raises. And the first rehearsal with Aziz took place the next day. When Aziz came out onto this little stage, huge Aziz, and five of us, not very tall people, when he came out and just stood at the table, it was clear that this is a producer, absolutely convincing, we believe him. And we were fascinated, and then we somehow formed into one family. Thus, an effective creative harmony was developed, which hopefully will last for more than one year. Then, half a year later, after we started performing Uyat, Gala offered me to play in The New Times the role of Charlie Chaplin at the age of 80. This is probably very strange, but I invited Aziz to the role of Charlie Chaplin. Because strange, because Charlie Chaplin is an artist of a completely different type. And I think Aziz really understood what he was saying. It intersected with the very figure of Charlie Chaplin although they are very different performers. I was interested to explore contemporary pains. The fact that today everything is action. Nobody needs an artist. These are the letter by Charlie Chaplin, and Aziz Bishinali have presented them to the public. That's cool. The play New Times, as well as Uyat, was a great success. Now, Artishok Troupe discusses new joint projects with the popular actor. Do you know how I found out that Aziz is a famous actor? I didn't know he was famous. I heard when the audience said, Bishan Aliyev, Bishan Aliyev, I think, well, you never know, that's cool. And then Aziz and I were celebrating something, and we got into a taxi together. The taxi driver was driving along the Tolibi street, and he goes like this. I thought we would die there. He says, oh, it's you. And Aziz says, yes, it's me. I let her... I later asked where Aziz was playing and people told me, how could you not know? I looked up his filmography. That's how I learned that Aziz is a star. Even if our hero doesn't like the word star and jokingly says that the mask rule turned out to be very convenient for him, still, there is no getting away from popularity. People recognize him. Can I take a picture with you? I was also born in Bishkek. Honey, come here. Take a picture of us, please. This man is our fellow countryman. I was also born in Frunze. Thank you. We know your dad too. Great actor. Thank you. I was glad to see you. Good luck. We will wait for Aziz to appear in new films, episodes of TV series and of course on stage. And the project Pride moves on to again witness that Kazakh people can become integral part of any country in the world, but remain at the same time ours. See you later. Yours, Aliftina Madiarova.